We did a lot of kindergarten chemistry in the Christmas time. So it's time for something more interesting. We are going to prepare some hydrozoic acid. This is the corresponding acid to the azide ion. With this acid, practically all inorganic azides can be synthesized by simply neutralizing it with the corresponding metal ion. For example, by treating sodium hydroxide or carbonate with hydrozoic acid, sodium azide will be formed. Similarly, lead nitrate could be treated with hydrozoic acid to form lead azide. In our case, we prepare some silver azide, just to prove that we have in fact prepared hydrozoic acid. Let's take a look at the history of azides and hydrozoic acid. Theodor Kirchhoff, the German chemist, discovered hydrozoic acid in 1890 while working with organic hydrazine derivates and diazole compounds. Phenylhydrazine was converted to phenyl azide with nitrosyl chloride. The hydrolysis of the phenyl azide then afforded hydrozoic acid. He describes the acid as follows. Azoimide is a gas of the most peculiar, terrible pungent odor. Even in dilute state it produces dizziness and headache, accompanied by a severe inflammation of the nasal mucosa. Then, in 1892, another German chemist, Joganis Adolf Wislaismus, developed a process for the large-scale manufacture of sodium azide from sodium metal, ammonia and nitrous oxide. Soon, the explosive properties of the heavy metal azides were recognized. However, only after a few decades and a lot of accidents was it possible to handle heavy metal azides safely. Lead and silver azide then quickly displaced mercury fulminate in blasting caps for military and later for civilian use. In more recent times, azides started to be used for airbags in cars. That's how laboratory curiosities find widespread use. Okay, that's enough history now. Let's take a look at our preparation of hydrozoic acid. This method is similar to those of Kirchhoff use. It is known as Sabana Jeff oxidation. It comprises reacting hydrazine, in the form of hydrazine sulfate with nitric acid. This yields hydrozoic acid, amongst other products like nitrogen gas and nitrous oxide. This is actually good, because it dilutes the stream of hydrozoic acid, as the latter is highly explosive when concentrated. This is also a good place for a word of warning. We don't normally do this, but this video is not about kindergarten sparklers. Hydrozoic acid is extremely poisonous, explosive and has an undescribable, traumatizing smell. It is also more poisonous than hydrogen cyanide. Hydrazine sulfate is also toxic and carcinogenic. The formed silver azide is highly explosive. You have been warned. This reaction is also suitable for lecture demonstrations. Here is the setup we are going to use. A test tube, equipped with a wide gas exit tube is used to generate the hydrozoic acid. The latter is then passed into the silver nitrate solution in a second test tube. Start by dissolving 0.7 grams of silver nitrate in a few cubic centimeters of water in a test tube and add a small amount of dextrin. The latter prevents the formation of large crystals of silver azide. The other test tube is charged with 1.5 grams of hydrazine sulfate followed by 4 cubic centimeters of nitric acid, the latter having a specific density of 1.3 grams per cubic centimeter. This corresponds to a 50% nitric acid by weight. After everything is ready, we start heating the hydrazine sulfate nitric acid mixture very carefully with a heat gun on a low setting. Soon, we can see an increasing amount of effervescence and a large amount of a curdy, white flocculent precipitate in the silver nitrate solution. This is our silver azide being formed.
After the effervescence has ceased, the apparatus is left to cool down and vent. The silver azide is then filtered off using the conventional gravity filtration rather than a vacuum filtration. After drying the silver azide is tested. Filter and test it, but do not preserve it. It is fascinating how loud such a small amount of silver azide is. The microphone does not give the detonation justice, because for such a small amount like demonstrated, you actually need hearing protection. Now you might ask why you want to prepare azides at all. In our case, we plan to isolate all the earth alkali metals in a highly pure form. This can be done with azides, as the azides of many metals decompose into nitrogen and the elemental metal. For example, Heating sodium azide will yield elemental sodium amongst ultra-pure nitrogen gas. Now for some additional notes, once the reaction mixture has reached the temperature of approximately 100 degrees centigrade, the reaction is self-sustaining without external heating. With heating, there is a risk of the runaway occurring. Practically all the azoimid is absorbed by the silver nitrate solution. You can expect a yield of about 0.1 to 0.17 grams of hydrozoic acid from 1.5 grams of hydrazine sulfate. It is not absolutely clear how this reaction works but it is believed that the hydrazine first reduces some nitric acid to nitrous acid which then reacts with more hydrazine in the usual manner. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more nitrogen chemistry.